welcome to a Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Almost forgot what day it was there. And an absolutely spectacular treat for us today in the form of reserved parking, which is, uh, well, it's the second puzzle I'll have tried, which features this rush hour mechanic um, uh, developed by this, the programmer and brilliant setter, Chameleon. This puzzle on the screen is by Rockrat Zero. Um, and basically... <laughs> Just to give you a flavour before I read you the rules properly in a few moments or um, you can move the cars around and the digits, the given digits move with them. I mean, it's an absolutely extraordinary thing. Um, and yeah, I, well, I, this puzzle is interesting, though, because we, we got recommended this about a week or so ago. So as sort of the big nine by nine version of the rush hour puzzle that Chameleon made, which was a six by six puzzle. Um, but our testers uh, who were having a look at it said they couldn't access it at all. So we had a bit of help from Rift Clown and Chameleon um, uh, a couple of days ago, and they, they managed to fix the software. So we play this in Chameleon software and it all works. And one of the testers who's, who has tried this said it is absolutely magnificent. So do give yourself a treat and make sure you have a go. Uh, one tip that the tester did say is that when we finish the puzzle, if we can finish the puzzle, um, it was something like go over the digits, go over the given digits and make sure that you've put in the, put in the digit on top of the, the given digit, which I, th I take to mean, imagine this, um, this car here ends up in this position. We should go and enter a two on that cell is what I think it we're being told to do. Um, and presumably that helps the software to know what's going on. Um, anyway, I will read you the rules, which are extraordinary in a moment or two, but I have a couple of very, very cool announcements to make first. I will start by wishing, well, I want, I've got some birthday announcements to do. Um, but the first one is to a young lady who was just born three days ago, Jaina over there in Canada um, to proud parents, Tolga and Rebecca. Um, and, you know, this is just, just wonderful. Three days old, born on the 6th of May. And Tolga was kind enough to send me um, a couple of pictures of Jaina and she is an absolute heartbreaker. So many, many congratulations to the two of you. And um, yeah, our very, very best wishes. And I've no doubt that Jaina is going to be a Sudoku mistress in no time at all. Um, next, Amelie uh, from your partner Esben. Now Esben wrote us an absolutely lovely email. Uh, thank you for that Esben and Amelie, I hope you are able to have a brilliant birthday today with of course chocolate cake. Maverick has taken off from the local airfield again with alarming uh, punctuality. Uh, next, Ben down there in Australia. Ben turns the secret today. 45 for those of you who don't know the secret um, and your wife Shannon wrote to us and told us that you'd appreciate a shout out Ben so I hope you have a brilliant day although oh I think your birthday is today and I'm suddenly realizing you'll be watching this on the 10th of May your time so you'll have to forgive me I'm a day late hopefully not a dollar short with that um, and then Dan your girlfriend Megan wrote to us and well lucky for you Dan Megan told us in the email that she is sorting out your chocolate cake today. So you're going to have a good day. And I hope you have a brilliant birthday apart from the chocolate cake, which I'm sure will be delicious. Um, and that's basically all the news. The only other thing to mention is something that's going gangbusters over on Patreon, which is our main monthly reward. It is Demono's novella slash Sudoku hunt, where in order to read the whole story, you have to keep solving puzzles. It is going, I say, so the, the feedback to that has been absolutely terrific. So give yourselves a treat and try that one. But now I'm going to get a treat. I'm going to get to play Reserved Parking by Rock Rat, Rock Rat Zero. And these are the somewhat extraordinary rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Rush hour mechanics apply to car movements. Given digits move with the cars. Variant rules apply in the grid as follows. Renban. Digits on pink lines and pink cars must form a set of consecutive numbers in any order. So if this square was a one, this line 
would have to have a 2 and a 3 on it as well to ensure that the line overall contained a 1, 2 and a 3 and, and those digits are therefore consecutive. Um, German whispers, adjacent digits on green lines and green casts must vary by at least 5. So wherever this car ends up in the finished solution to this puzzle, I think we're being told that this square here has to be at least five different from two. So it has to be seven, eight or nine by my reckoning. Um, black crop key. Dig digits adjacent on black dots and black cars must form a two to one ratio. So if this was a two, oh, it can't, well, I'm not sure whether it could be a two, but let's say it could be a two, that would either have to be four or one in order to ensure that within the domino, one of the digits is double the other. Um, now, next. Now, this is a rule we've not had before. Fire hydrants. Cars may not permanently park adjacent to a crop key dot, which I think means that this black car is not allowed to stay here permanently it would get a bad fine or towed away um, because the fire hydrant is there. So these two cells, I think, are adjacent to the fire hydrant and therefore cars cannot park in either of those squares permanently. But presumably they can sort of rest there temporarily as we shuffle them around. Now, <laughs> this is where it gets bonkers. Escape rule. Initially, no cars may leave the caged 6x6 region. Move the red car through the cage opening and into the red outlined parking space to allow the other cars to move outside this initial cage. So if you look at the top left hand side of this grid, you can see there is a great big six by six cage there with an exit. And what we're being told, I think, is that we have to get this red car through this gap and into the parking space that lives there. There's like a, a horizontal domino of parking spaceage that we're going to have to access. Um, and that's, I think what we're also being told is that if we do manage to do this, then the other cars will be freed from the six by six. Let me just, yeah. So if I try and move this pink car out of the, of the, of the cage, it won't let, it won't go out it bumps into the edge. Um, yeah, that one bumps into the edge as well. So we're not allowed to do bumping. Well, we're not allowed to get these cars out of their six by six until we've got the red car into that space. Reserved parking. So that's the name of the name of the puzzle. Other cages in the grid are reserved parking spaces. Park the corresponding colored cars in their space. Reserved parking spaces and perhaps other cells in the grid have hidden digits that will be revealed by driving. Um, right, so what that seems to suggest is that once we can move the cars anywhere, we need to put a pink car in there and a pink car in there and a green car in there, I think. Does it have to be that one? I'm not sure. But um, a green car in there, a green car in there, black car in there I think it looks like it looks like we're sort of being told which which cars we have to put where and then the final part of the instructions is something I wholeheartedly echo thanks to chameleon and Sudoku skunkworks for testing and support absolutely absolutely right fabulous fabulous stuff the Sudoku innovations continue a go-go um, and do have a go at this one the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I think what we're going to have to do is play this rush hour game. So let's move the cars. Um, now, I've got to be honest with you. If I was solving this and I wasn't on camera, I would just be going hell <laughs> helter skelter, like shuffling these things around as fast as I could in order to just try and force this car into this box. Now, but I'm aware on Cracking the Cryptic, the idea is that we try and do things as logically as possible. So I will, I will, that's exactly what I will try and do. I will try and do this logically. Um, now, I mean, okay, I can see something fairly obvious which is that in order to get the red car into this parking space, 
this great big car and the, well let's call these limousines these two limousines this pink limousine and this green limousine they have to get out of the way and within the six by six the only way this can get out of the way is if it's in rows four five and six it's got to move down to the bottom of the four of the six by six as does this limousine here so basically our task is going to be to get these two out of the way it's as simple as that if we get this one and this one over to the left then we can just drive the red car out so okay but something I learned from the last rush hour puzzle is you can't like this this two car here this horizontal car can't move vertically so so I don't think I don't think I can do anything at the start apart from reverse the red car away from the parking space which seems to be slightly counterintuitive I mean if I move these down I can't move anything else so I think that's got to go that way and then this presumably has to come oh, I see so this comes down some number I don't know how many but it looks to me like I've got to get either this or this across let's move it down fully so now we can do this and move this across now so now we've got our first decision to make we could move this slightly although that doesn't seem to do anything to be honest and we can move this up ah ah okay so forgetting this because i don't i don't think that does anything moving this up does do something and it allows my red car to get even further away from its parking space by going here uh, this uh, i think i might have already i mean i can't have gone wrong because i can't have done anything else but now i'm completely zugzwanged aren't i i can't do anything I can move this over here. I mean, what have I actually achieved here? I managed to move the black car into the top left, but that, that was on a forced sequence. I literally couldn't have done anything else. I've moved the red car here, so I suppose I can move. Oh, I see. No, actually, I, I've, I've, missed, I've missed something here. If I move this up, I hadn't spotted I could move that too horizontally so we are still in a forced sequence there's literally nothing else we could have done moving this two across allows this three to come down and that seems to allow this six nine to come across I have to say this well I've got two thoughts about this the first is that I don't seem to be really I suppose I have shuffled these down slightly but I've moved this further away from the parking space but I do also think I've been on a sort of forced forced run I couldn't really have done anything else to this point and what have we just got we've managed to move this further across which is allowing these two potentially to come up right okay so I can see that that's going to allow this to move which it couldn't otherwise have done so I presume that's what we have to do now so I'm doing this in a slightly strange way I'm doing this not by being able to visualize what the final solution must look like beyond that there must be a limousine these two limousines in the bottom right but actually simply by force you know we, we couldn't really have done anything else I don't think so now that's got to go up and this has got to come across which makes me think this has got to follow it and that allows these to come down and all we've got to do is get this out of the uh all I've got to do now is get this out of the way aha and the red, red car can drive across um oh i've managed to get these out of the way now and that still doesn't seem to do it i 
What on earth? Hang on, I'm just going to unwind there because I got excited for a moment, didn't I? Where did I get it? So yeah, okay, so this coming across here, that must be forced. And, and then what, what else can you do? You have to join, you have to move these down. And then what do you do? Well, you've got, the only place you've got flexibility is the position of the seven limousine, which looks to me like it has to go here, which allows this to go up and this to come right. But that's, oh, I see that can come down again now. This is so strange. It's so, it's so peculiar, but, but I still think I'm broadly on a linear path. Uh, and I have managed to get my limousines down into the bottom right hand corner. So all I've got to do now, well, the problem is now I'm stuck again. I've got to move this out of the way again. Oh, that doesn't, do, oh no, that does do something. I can move that down and this across. I've actually, look at this. I've managed to pack boxes four and five completely with cars. I don't know. I don't remember if that's what I had at the start, but it, 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 it doesn't feel like this is quite what we had at the start. But what on earth do I do from here? What have I just done? I've moved that across. What did I do before that? I must, I must try and keep track of exactly the ordering I'm going in here because it's sort of dictating what the solve needs to look like. See, now I think I'm in a cul-de-sac. I might be wrong about this, but this does not feel it doesn't feel like I've got anything I can do here. I'm just going to unwind for a moment. Let me just have a think about this. So I managed to get the black car down into this box. So I don't know. I mean, I can see how it allows for this type of thing. But this OSC, oh, and then that could come over here. Okay, and now I can get the six and nine back over here again. And have I just have I just unwound everything I've, I did before, or is this in, this is different? Is this different because this black car's in a different place? I can't, I can't honestly remember, but certainly <laughs> if, it's, if it is different, I think it's linear because I don't think I could have done much else. Right, so what on earth am I meant to do now? So now I can, I can shuffle these around, I think. These, these seem to form a cycle, don't they? By which I mean, if I do this, those two can come up and that can come across. Or is that, what, is that just what, is that the position I was in a moment ago that I've just unwound? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh uh, no, hang on, I could do this. That I've not got this position before, although this doesn't feel right because now I've managed to move my limousines back up again. Am I am, am I actually further forward here than I was at the start? I'm not. I'm not even sure. I could tell you. I think I've gone on a journey that's been broadly linear to get here. That's what I feel like I've done, but why, how has this helped me to solve this puzzle? You see, what I need to do now, broadly, again, is I've got to twist this grid round clockwise. In other words, these three cars have to end up, 
see I can't do this because this one I can only move horizontally um, but if I can move these two cars yeah, if I could move these two cars into this two, these two spaces, this car over to here, then I can shift these down. And I could shift these out of the way. And that, that might get that, that car out. Now. What did I just do? I just... Okay, so I've just created this gap here. So we've got to use this gap somehow. So we've got to move these maybe down. Oh no, this isn't going to work, is it? Maybe if I move them all the way down, then I move this across. Then I could move these. I can move these up. I can move them up further. And then I can get this one into one of... See, what I was trying to do was to get both of these, this one and this one, into this 2x2. Two two. I can get one of them over into the 2x2. Two two. But that's, that's not the same at all as getting two of them over. Um, And now I'm stuck again, aren't I? How do we get out of this little impasse? We've got to... Oh, I s I'm not sure I can. In fact, the only thing I think I can do is to reverse my red car over here again. And even that is complicated. Let's try and achieve that. I think, I think that looks something like this. Which, ah, that does allow me to... Ah, so now I've done it. Now I've got this one over here somehow. I don't quite know how I did that. But I did achieve it. Yes, I can do it. I've, I've done it. I've done the puzzle. Right, so when I say done the puzzle, I mean that in the loosest possible way. But I have got... I can get the red car out from here. Because watch, I just do that. Down, 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 down. And now there's a passageway. Boom. Whoa! Great job for it. Oh, ah you, ah, you can't see this. On the right hand side of the screen, a big yellow thing has come up that says great job freeing the car. Is that, it says release, ah, right. And there's a button. Then if I press it, it says release all other cars from the cage. Ah, oh, that's so, look, it's deleted the cage. All around there, the cage has just disappeared. And that does mean that I can move these cars around. This is brilliant. Did, did that put digits in when I did that as well? The red car, did it have seven and three in it before? In my brain, I, f I felt like those digits appeared when I put this, um, this in the car, or this car in its parking space. But that might have been uh, my brain playing tricks on me. So now, well, now I think the job is going to be well, am I allowed to just do this however I want? Can I look? Can I just that that did that did put that digit in? That digit wasn't there. I think right. So this is obviously right. This has definitely not got any digits in. Let's just see what happens here. No. Oh yes, it gives me a four. So when you put the car in the right place. It does give you digits. Oh, this is just magnificent, isn't it? Right, so we... Ah, right, these two are... We've got to get these two out of the way. So we can move that one, nine. And that one we get an eight. Uh, what have I done? What What's going on here? This... Oh, oh, I see. Right, there's a digit on top of another digit. That does That doesn't seem likely to be the correct answer. Right, so now we seem to have achieved complete... We've done the parking. Um, we've got one, two, three. We've got seven cars unparked, which I presume we can put anywhere, can we? Or with it? Well, this is a horizontal car, so this is somewhere in this row. This is a vertical car, so it's somewhere in this column, and presumably not on top of the nine. Um, and we get some, 
Right, so, so we get some digits in effect because this this nine that's appeared in that nine mean there's a, oh, hang on, how do I do this? I want to put a nine in one of those cells like that. Okay, so we can do that. I mean, obviously these two cars here can't end up in the same box. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yes, right, so now we've got to remember that the cars have Sudoku properties applying to them. So green cars are German whispers lines. So this digit is seven because it's got to be five different from two and it can't be eight or nine. And those eight, that, that eight and nine are real because these cars are in their parking spaces. So we're not allowed to move these around. So that is a, that's a real seven, but this, is, is that is that part of that car? Yeah, okay, so we don't know where this car lives at the moment, at the top. Um, right, so what we should do is, is work on the cars where we... Oh, this is a four. There's a four in the corner. It doesn't get a song, but it must be a four because these two digits need to be in a one to two ratio. So one of the digits is double the other and I can't write 16 into the corner. That would be simply ludicrous. This square is a one or a three. And that's because it needs to be five different from nine at least, and it can't be four or two. Oh, I like this. I mean, this is really, this is really clever. I mean, that initial puzzle was really clever, I thought. I think I, I could not claim that I did it 100% logically. I... What I felt like when I was doing it was that I was essentially forced in order to not end up where I had been before to end up somewhere near that finished position and then and then I could see what I wanted to do but I, again being honest I I managed to get this one I think here but how this one also managed to get over there is something I mean it was it was completely wonderful but I don't I couldn't visualize how that was going to happen. And then I could visualize how it was going to finish at the end. It was quite satisfying. Right, now what are, no, these, these are going to be moved. Hang on, if I put a pencil mark into this square and then move the car, what happens? So this square has to be five different from two. So that's got to be a seven, eight or a nine in the finished grid. This car, this is what it will look like. Now, if I move the car, the pencil mark doesn't move with the car. So what we need to do, I think, is to check the options, because I bet there's a way of um, open settings. Start collective solve. What does that mean? Highlight conflicts. Hmm. OK, no, that's probably not. OK, maybe there isn't a way of doing that then sort of want to lock the pencil mark into the car. Because then I could, what a per, these are Renban lines, aren't they? So these two digits have to be from one, two, four, and five, because they've got to be a consecutive sequence with a three. Yeah, see, if I put the pencil mark in and then I move this, or I'm gonna get myself into trouble. I think I'm going to stay, I'm going to pencil mark cars that are fixed in position. So this square is consecutive with six and isn't seven. So this is five. This square is consecutive with four and isn't five. So that's three. So, oh, right. So this, this, this is definitely in the wrong place. Okay. I don't quite know where this goes, but I can see it's very restricted now because let, let me move it around and show you. We know it's not at the bottom of the grid because the three and the nine are in the same cell. Let's move it up one. Well, that doesn't work because three and nine can't be in a consecutive run within only three three digits. That doesn't work. Same for that. That doesn't work. This doesn't work because there's a three in the row. This doesn't work. There's a three in the row. And these threes are fixed, so that's fine. Now, we've got to move this. So this three is either here or here. Now, hang on, that means one, right, that means this digit here is always 
part of this sequence. So I feel that it's legitimate to label that square one, two, four or five and to do Sudoku on it, except of course I can't do Sudoku on it using things like this because this might not end up in this position. Although in fact this definitely won't end up in this position because there's a two threes in this row. Ah, this is very tricky now. What, what exactly am I meant to focus on? These squares are consecutive with seven. So these are from five, six, eight, and nine. These squares are consecutive with, no, they're not consecutive with two, they're German whispers with two. So these squares have to be, these two squares are sevens, eights, and nines. Maverick, Maverick is possibly doing loop the loops at the moment. Um, I hate seeing these threes in the same row. <laughs> uh, ah, that digit is Sudoku, Sudokuable nearly. That digit can only be one, two, or five by Sudoku. It sees seven, eight, nine in its row and three, four, six in its column. Now, now this. Well, I tell you something, this is not a one. Because if it's a one, it breaks this green line rather prettily. So imagine this was a one, what would we be putting as the consecutive sequence on the Remban line? Well, we'd be putting one, two, and three on. Now, I haven't really talked about secrets of whispers lines because it seemed completely by the by until this point, but I will tell you some secrets about whis whispers lines now. So first secret. There are no fives on whispers lines because if you put a five on the line, the adjacent digit is impossible because it's got to be at least five different from five. If you go up, you get to 10. If you go down, you get to zero. They don't work. So there's no five on a whispers line. And that means that each digit on a whispers line can be defined or thought of as either above five or below five. Now imagine this cell was below five. Even if it's as below five as it could possibly be, let's make it a one, what's this digit's profile then? Well, because it has to be at least five different, it's the other side of five. So this digit must be six, seven, eight, or nine now. And then this digit, even if this was nine, this digit is at least five different from nine, so it switches back the other side of five. So you get this oscillation of the high-low numbers along a whispers line. So if this Remban line contained one, two, and three, we know that at least one of these digits must be low because we need to oscillate. But in order to only have one low digit on the line, it would have to be the middle digit as low and it would have to be a four. And four is an interesting digit on a German whispers line because four is monogamous. It's very well behaved and it only partners up with one digit. And that digit is a nine. It's the only valid digit that it goes with. And it would require two nines on the line. And that doesn't work from Sudoku perspective. So this cannot be a one. Um, now, now it also, no, it can't. It can't be a two either. Because if it was a two, what would that digit be? Well, it's got to be in a consecutive sequence with two, which means it's selected from one, three, and four on a three cell line, but it can't be three and four. So it would be a one and that would restore this line to a one, two, three line and still break the whisper. So that square is a five, which could never have gone on the whisper. That digit is, well, it's either three, four, it's a seven because it's either three, four, six. This is a consecutive sequence of three digits that involves five. So we can pencil mark this as three, four, six, or seven, and it sees three, four, and six. So that must be seven. This must be six to make sure it's consecutive sequence. And suddenly we are, we're doing better, aren't we? So now this black dot is not three, six. S six in box seven, is in one of those two cells. So this black dot is not two or three or six. Oh, no, well, it, maybe it could have been if the three was down there on the black dot. Um, 
Right. Ah, that is, uh, this is, this is lovely. I love this. Right, what's that cell? And the answer is, I've not got a Scooby-Doo, except I know it is not high. It is not higher than five, because it sees six, seven, eight, and nine. It sees six there, and seven, eight, nine in the row. So it is low, which means it's one, two, three, or four, which means this is high by oscillating polarity. So that's six, seven, eight, or nine. And this is low, which means it's one, two, three, or four, except it's not three. And no, that I was about to say. <laughs> okay, no, that it really isn't three because all these cars are in their position. And no, hang on, hang on. This sees a two and a four as well. That's a one. Sorry, I didn't see that. So that's a one, which which puts the least amount of pressure on this digit. But that seems to make that cell a three by Sudoku. Um, that's got to be important somehow, hasn't it? Let me think about this. Well, this digit's not a six because that would require double one. Six is the other monogamous digit on the whispers lines. So this is two, three or four, and this is seven, eight or nine. It's not seven. Okay, so this is eight or nine, which unfortunately can still go with any of those digits. Um, ah, pardon, puck. Uh, no, sorry, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. So, what on earth do we look at now? I am not confident that I know. Uh, <laughs> is there a way of knowing this? Probably. Um, I don't know. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not having any any epiphanies here. One, two, eight, and nine into. That, oh, yeah, okay, well, that's a little epiphany. This square in the bottom corner by Sudoku is an 8 or a 9. So that forms a pair in this row. So what we've not placed in the row is 5, 6, and 7. So, ah, all right, so where does 7 go in the bottom row? It's not there, so that's 7, and that's great, because that gets me a 6 as well. And these two squares are a 5, 6 pair. And presumably, oh, Oh no, uh, no. Okay, so we can't do that. But these squares are now one, two, and five. Ah. Well, oh, okay. I was going to say this can't be five because of this. And that is sort of true, but it's much simpler to say it can't be five because you can't put five on a black dot because that cell can't be two and a half or 10. So this is a one or a two. Now, if this is a one, we run into a fire hydrant. <laughs> of course we do. If this is a one, that's a two, which has to be this two, because this two occupies this row somewhere, but that's going to put a car next to the fire hydrant, which is not allowed. So that's got to be two. These squares here have got to be a one five pair. This square has got to be a one or a four. And Right, what does that, oh, oh God. <laughs> I hate it, two threes in a row, I'm going, no, no, um, okay, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to move this from here, because this, this, this thing is really uh, bugging me, right, so can this go at the top of the grid, I think it can, I don't know, I don't, oh, I don't know where this one goes, I need to find a way of, Uh, maybe I need to, um, how could I do this? I want to, I want to make it very clear to myself when I'm allowed to use the cars for Sudoku. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to put green, a green background. 
Or maybe I should put a, a, a bolder colored black background. Uh, I'm not sure actually. I think I'll go, I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and emphasize by, so that, that can be surrounded by red. This can be surrounded by black. Right, so and if if one of these other cars is not surrounded by its own colour, I'm not allowed to use it for Sudoku. Okay. <laughs> That's not really helped me, has it? Um, okay, and where did all this come from? I was looking at this one. So that can be there. It can't be there, it would clash with the three in the row. It can't be there, it would clash with the three in the row. Can it be there? Well, if, it, if it's not then there, it's nowhere, because that three is overlaying digits that most certainly are not three. So this thing has two possible positions. It either sits at the very top of the, the column, or it sits exactly there. So it's in one of those two places. This one is definitely not here because it clashes with a nine. So let's move that one across a bit. So at least it's got a chance to be right. Ah, uh, oh, hang on. This row by Sudoku. Oh, I've got a black dot I can fill, surely. I've not put four and eight in this row. Ah, ah. Yeah, three, four and eight go into those cells. But two of them need to be in a doubling relationship. So that must be a four, eight pair. And this square here must be a three by Sudoku. Now, well, that feels wrong, doesn't it? That's, I, I can see that's doing something here. I just want to check this four, eight pair. I can do the four, eight pair because there's an eight, nine here. Right, four goes here, eight goes here. This square here is not four anymore. These squares are one and something. One, oh, no, one and four, that's okay. So these squares are two and three. And that, is that a real three? It is a real three, so I'm allowed to use it. So two, three, that doesn't affect the whisper because three is five away from both eight and nine. But now I want to, yeah, this is the other thing I noticed when I was doing um, Sudoku of all things on this box. Oh, that three isn't real. No, I'm totally and utterly wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. I thought I was gonna be able to get three in this box. This three is real. This three is real. So three is, now this three, what do we know about this three? Well, actually I do know something. I don't, because that's why I've pencil marked this cell. Didn't we work out that this three is in one of those two places. So I'm, I was allowed to pencil mark this cell. Let's just double check. Yeah, that's fair enough. So I can use, I can use this three, just not this three. So this three, which is somewhere up here in this, it's in, it's in one of those two cells in box two. In fact, let's put that in. This three and this three. Ah, so I don't know because I don't know whether this is real. There's a three in one of those two cells. But does that mean, ah, hang on, hang on. What's going on with this green limousine? This green limousine now can't be, oh, it could never have been in row six. Yeah, let's look at this. So let's move this car around. Where does it go? Well, it can't go there because the twos will clash in row six. This, this, this two is definitely somewhere in this row, so it can't, you can't put another two in on the green limousine. So, so you can't put this here, and therefore it's somewhere else, don't know where, but it's, it's, its wing cells are not eight, so they are seven and nine. Now that seven is real. But, but that means we can't overlay this limousine on this, these pencil mark threes. If I try and put it here, this cell's a three, but it needs to be a seven or a nine. If I put it here, this, this is, oh no, if I put it here, it might work. Oh, bobbins, okay. So it could go there. Can it go here? Yes. 
<laughs> Ow. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so I can't... I don't think I can. I, I, what I'd like to do is to be able to notate these two cells with a 7-9 pair, but um, I don't have the facility to be able to do that. So this one we don't know where it goes. This one we don't know where it goes. This one we don't know where it goes. This one... Oh, uh, this... Whoa. Okay, what's... Yeah, okay, what's the left-hand digit of this one? Well, it's a 1 or a 4, isn't it? Goodness me, Maverick. What on earth? He appears to have got the worst aeroplane in the world and literally buzzed over my roof. Um, yeah, this square, wherever this goes in the row, it's got to be in a, a 1 to 2 ratio with a 2. So it's a 1 or a 4. And it's going to be a pair with this because this cannot be there because then the fire hydrant rule is broken. We've got a car next to the fire hydrant. So there is a floating 1, 4 pair in this row. And that means the other digits in this row are 3, 7, 8, and 9. Which is about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Mm, sorry, okay. I don't know. I, d I think... What do I think? I've no idea what to think, to be honest. What about... What's this one? I've not thought about this one yet. So this one does def definitely doesn't live where I've got it at the moment because this seven is real and that clashes. So I need to move this one out of the way. Let's move that one down. It's at least here, isn't it? Um, it can't go there, actually. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, this, this one's restricted. This seven sees that one and that one. So it could be here. Or it could be here. But that's it. So it's in one of those two positions. So there is a 7 in the top row in one of those two positions. And, and, whether it's here or here, this cell, which is row 1, that cell, is in a consecutive relationship with 7. So this cell is 5, 6, 8 or 9. And look at that. It doesn't see anything at all. Ah, no, I've got it. I've got it. Right. This one, remember this one? <laughs> this one has seven and nine in its in its wings because it can't have eight. Well, we can't overlay two cars together. So if this was here, you couldn't fill this, this whisper car. This whisper car, if there is such a thing as a whisper car, you couldn't fill it. So the seven is not there. The seven is here. And that seems to say that the three is here. So this, I don't like this pencil mark. How do I do, how do I correct this? Oh, wow, no, it's doing something I didn't want it to do. I don't know what it's just done there. Right, what I wanted to do was to point to this square and say this square is a seven. So I was gonna get rid of the pencil marks. This square is, is a three because the three was in one of those two squares and therefore it's here. This is not a 7 because it would break the whisper. So this square is 5. Oh, right. This square is 5, 6, 8 or 9. And oh, this, this is not a real, this is not a real thingy. This, this square is 5, 6, 8 or 9, but we can't use that. So this is, this is. Ah, no. Okay. That, I can get rid of 5 from here because although this 5, I don't know where it goes. It definitely can't overlap with this car. And that six is real. So this square is eight or nine, which means this square can't be five anymore because you can't make a sequence. So this is either six, seven, eight, or it's seven, eight, nine in some order. Where's my phone buzzing? Um, okay, hang on a sec. I do not actually need to read that. Um, Right. Okay. All right. So now, ah, now, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to purplify these and purplify these because these are not allowed to move in the finished solution. This, 
Well, maybe we do know more about this one now, because this we know it's got sevens and nines in these squares, but the seven... Yeah. Okay. I think this one is restricted. I can't quite pinpoint it, but... It can't be lower in the grid than where it is, because it will clash with the two here or the two here. So it's either exactly where it is, in which case this square is a nine and this square is a seven by Sudoku, or it's exactly one higher, because it can't be two higher. If we move the two to here, there would definitely be a seven in box two, and there would be another seven here. So one, it's hard to pencil like this. One of these two squares is a two. One of, ah, here's the point. One of these two squares is a nine because it can't be a seven because of the seven here. So the seven is in one of these two cells. This is mad. This is mad pencil marking. But if one of these is a nine, that's not a nine, look. In fact, 9 is in one of those three cells, which is useless. Um, ah, here's another point. Now this blue one's been fixed. Where does this live? I think it lives where it is, because if we try and move it from where it is, we can't put it there, it'll run into the three in the row, and it runs into the three in the row there, and it can't be in the top row anymore. So it's got to be here, which means it gets blued. And if it gets blued, there we go, this square is a three now. Yeah, that feels right, doesn't it? Because by Sudoku, we've got to put the three into this position. Well, what's, but what does that do? It doesn't do anything. Five? Oh, five. Five can't go on the... Well, we don't know whether this is the green car. Ah! Five is in one of those three positions. It would be so easy to make an error. I may have already made one. It's incredibly complicated, this. Right, this is in the correct position, isn't it? This one, because I've purplified it. So that means this square is... That's a naked single. I don't believe it. It's a one. Because it's from one, two, four, and five to eventually be consecutive with three. And it doesn't seem to be able to be two, four, or two, four, or five. So that's a one, and that's a two. That's absolutely four. So this is one, and this is four. Now. Now I'm wrong. I'm wrong. We need to go back. I've just realized what I've done there. I've done exactly what I just chastised myself. I used this 2 to say this square couldn't be a 2. I don't know that that 2's there because this is floating in the column. Oh, bobbins. So this is 1, 2, 4 or 5. Now, it, it really isn't 4 or 5. But if this 2 is here... Oh, that's really harsh. This can't be 5 now because this is 1 or 2. Ah, so I have at least got a 1, 2, 4 triple in the column. That's legitimate, I think. So I've not placed 5, 6, and 8. So that sees a naked single. That sees a real 5 and 6 in the row. So that is 8. So this square is real. It really is 5 or 6. Now this 8. Well, where does the black car go now? The black car is not allowed to park in either of those two cells. Um, what I mean is I can't move it left, right one or right two because it will end up next to the fire hydrant. And it can't be there because two and three are not in a doubling relationship. So, th so this stays put. This stays put. And that means this green car is most certainly in the wrong place. But to get it out, I'm going to have to move cars that I know are in the right place. This square, this square is a 1 by Sudoku because it can't be a 4 but it needs to be in a doubling relationship with 2. So that's a 4. This is a 1. This is a 5. 5 is at the top of the grid in one of two places. 
that's real isn't it because this is this is correct right what about this row sevens and seven and nine i can do it that seven is real so i'm allowed to go nine i'm allowed to go seven so get rid of the pencil mark nines from this box um so i think it might make sense Do we know where this two goes? So this is this is in a whisper relationship. So this digit is seven, eight, or nine. So the left hand digit needs to be seven, eight, or nine, but it can't stay where it is because there are two twos in this box if it does. So it can't go there because that's not a seven, eight, or nine. It can't go there because that's a five or a six. It can't go there because that's not a seven, eight, or a nine. It jolly well could go here. I oh, well, it depends. It depends where this one lives actually that's interesting if if this two did go in that domino specifically this couldn't be a seven eight or a nine because you can't overlap this green this horizontal green car with this vertical limousine and you would be needing to because remember this vertical limousine has a seven nine pair on it and there's an eight there so that's not the two so and the two is not there by so no, because the so this car goes there and that is a two and this square is an eight or a nine because it must be you know this we need to move this car we need to move the car so the car needs to go over there this comes back down this one i'll move it back down we don't this one is still very floaty we don't know what that's doing um right so we need to put right this is interesting one eight nine into this box which creates a triple in the column so these squares are two five and six but we don't i'm not sure how much we know about those actually uh is this real no we, this is not real i was about to put seven here which would, uh, would actually wouldn't work it's it's so easy to make an error here it's so easy are these all real these numbers are all real so this is a one right so this is a one eight nine triple at the top of column three so this nine if it's real well it is real but if it goes there that's got to be a six which it looks like it can be um I want to use this two so badly to correct this digit. Um, can we do some Sudoku? I mean, that's that can always get us out of jail, can't it? Is there some Sudoku to be done? Not obviously, at least not not obviously to me. These squares are one two. No, no, not they're one four eight and nine right so these are not four these are not one so it'd be very nice i mean if that was an eight nine pair that would correct these two digits we'd know what they were we do know there's a nine in one of these can ah all right this this square is not a nine that's going to do it this square is not a nine because if it was it would have to be part of the blue car and that means the left digit would be a six and this square is a three so that's not nine which means this is nine and therefore it's the top of the green car and therefore that is seven and that's not seven i don't want that ah i don't know what that's just done that's done something very peculiar all I wanted to do was get rid of that seven pencil mark. And then this square is one now. We've actually proved that. This is one, this is four, this is two. This is not one, so that's one. Uh, this is a naked single. Because I've got four, five, and six to place in this box, and that sees four and five. So that's six, that's five, that's four. That's five, that's six this is now in the correct place we can greenify it um, <laughs> i 
I've got two nines in that column. That looks so wrong. They've got to go. <sighs> okay, that six is right, is it? So that that means that's eight, which means this is nine. And that's what I was actually hoping for for once. Because that seven, eight, nine sees that square become four. That square become a one. So that gives us an eight, nine pair here. I don't know how this is all going to get resolved, but I presume there is a way. I think it might have to be something over here that resolves that digit, but we'll see. Um, all right, let's look at the top two digits then. They've got to be a two six pair. So, right, let's, let's put that in. If this was six, it would need to have a nine here and it can't. So that's got to be two. That's got to be six. Now, does that help us with this? Well, where, where does this go? I suppose that's a very reasonable question. There's only one place it can go. It's a six next to a nine. It has to be there. So we need to, we need to move things again. <laughs> We've got to move that down. Move this across to there. Move this up. Make this blue. We've got to correct these pencil marks that's got a five six underneath it that's got an eight nine underneath it so this now is an eight that does it look so that's nine that's eight that's nine that's eight this square is not uh, this square is in fact a five there's thunder in the air um this is a three five we could get a three in the corner we do get a three in the corner. This is a three five pair. There's a five here. So we're going to put five here and. Oh, <laughs> it's, well, it hasn't got the party pop effect, but that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight losing its religion. Right. This is five. This is one. This is one. This is eight. Have we are all the cars in the right place? That that green car needs an outline look. Um, these squares here are a four seven pair which we can do so four goes here seven goes here these squares here are two and six which we can you've guessed it oh no they're not oh, i've made an error i've got a two here i mean hang on i've got i've not got a two in this box i've got two twos in this box ah what have i done what have i done that's not intelligent of me maybe it was a sudoku error Yes, it was. Look, I put two six in here. I should have put four six. Okay, let's let's go back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, can this... No, this still can't be six because of the six nine pair. It would require this to be nine. So we still have to do all of this, all of the jiggery pokery to slot these into the correct places, correct the shading get rid of the middle pencil mark, get rid of the whatever that is under there, Get make this eight, make this eight, this nine, this nine, this eight. That is still a naked single, but hopefully this time we won't have such a ricket. That's a one, that's a five. Two and seven looks okay this time. Do we get a real three in the corner? We still do. That's another three in the corner. <laughs> We get four and six here. Okay, that's that looks like it's working better, doesn't it? So now we need six and eight in this box. So six goes here, eight goes here, and now we need seven and nine, which means that's seven and that's nine. Now this might be correct. <laughs> Absolutely mad. Completely and utterly crazy puzzle. Ah uh, now I want to greenify those. My phone is going absolutely crazy. Um and we'll click tick. No, <laughs> no. What? What is wrong with that? It was beautiful. It felt logical. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to go through each of these. Let's just take a check of each of the... Uh, the, the, the cars look like they have the correct relationship. Blue cars don't have anything, do they? Blue cars? I don't think there was a mention of what happens to blue cars. Oh, I know what it might be, actually. 
Wasn't I told I had to go over all the digits, all, all the given digits or something on the cars? Maybe, maybe that's what I've done wrong. Right, let's just go over these. I've got no idea why this will make any difference, but I'm very, very happy to try it. Three, four, eight, two, five, six, two. Is it just that it's just the, the black digits, is it, that I do? I don't know. This I don't think this can possibly make a difference. Let's try that. Absolutely right. It does. <laughs> that is a form of magic I have just performed. I don't get it, but it was jolly exciting. What a wonderful puzzle that is. I mean, that is that is so many puzzles in one. There's sort of a rush hour thing at the start, which was really interesting and sort of felt quite impossible in places. But that, 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 that led on to such an incredible Sudoku puzzle. And it was incredible with these floating things every now and again. And it was very easy to make a mistake, which I then did. Um, well that's ah, Rock Rat Zero, take a bow. Chameleon, thank you so much for making software that can do this. You also take a bow, that was wonderful. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind, and I think they ought to be kind today. Not about me, of course, but Rock Rat Zero deserves an awful lot of plaudits, in my humble opinion. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>